Hi class, today we're going to be talking about relations and functions. So you should have the worksheet that I gave you in class called N6-1 and it should be titled Relations and Functions. First I want to go over the definition of a relation. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. There's going to be several different ways on how we can describe it. The first one will be your list of ordered pairs. That's usually going to give you your X and your Y values. Your X always comes first and then you have your Y value. The next way that it could be described is a graph. And here you have the plotted points again using your X and your Y coordinate to plot the points. A third way is the mapping diagram. Here again you are listing out both your X and your Y values. Here are your X's and here are your Y's. Okay, the fourth way we have a table, again, a list of your X and your Y values. And then the last way is going to be an equation where I give you the X values and you're going to plug them in in order to answer what the Y value is. Or again, talking about your domain and range. Now let's just review again what a domain and range is. Your domain, that's going to be your set of input values. It's always going to be your X values. Again, remember that your domain is your X values and it's the independent quantity. Then we have our range. The range is going to be the set of output values. Again, it's going to be your Y values and your Y values will always be your dependent quantity. So let's work a few problems together. On number one, we're talking about finding the domain and range of the relation above. Now let's actually look at the list of ordered pairs. So first we're talking about domain. Remember our domain are all of our X values. So let me go ahead and circle all of our X values. Now when we do domain and range, we always put our X and our Y values in brackets, not parentheses. So if I look at my X values, I have 0, 0, 3, 3, and 4. Now once you write domain and range, you only have to write each value one time. So since I have the zeros up there twice, I'm only going to write it once under my domain. And then I've got the 3 and I have 4. Now let's look at our range. My range values, I have negative 2, positive 2, negative 1, 1 and 0. So again, I'm going to write these in brackets. And I have negative 2, two negative 1, 1, and 0. And make sure on that negative 1 you have the negative. My pen wasn't writing it. There you go. All right, so now let's look at page number two. Now we're going to be talking about a function. A function is a relation in which each X value corresponds to exactly one Y value. So make sure you highlight that or underline it. And the other thing I definitely want you to underline right here where it says no X coordinate are used more than once. Okay, if my X values repeat, then it will not be a function. So let's work questions two through four. If I look at question two, it says determine whether each of the following relations is a function. So again, by definition, I'm going to be looking at my X values only. So if I look at these X values, I can see that it's 0, 0, 3, 3, and 4. So by definition, since they have repeated, I will not have a function. Okay, let's look at number three. Again, I have my X values, one, two, three, and four. Those did not repeat, so this is a function. Sorry, I'm having some trouble with the pen. That should say yes. Okay, now for those of you who actually might have put no, I know some of you are probably looking at these Y values that repeated. 
it is okay to have the y values repeat as long as the x values do not repeat. So now let's look at number four. This is called mapping. Let's write it out as some coordinates. So again, this is my x column and this is my y column. So if I write it out, I have one comma three. I have one comma four. And I have two comma three. So now by definition again, my x values have repeated right here, my one and my one. So again, if they repeat, my answer is no, this is not a function. Now look at number five. I look at all my x values. None of them did repeat. So here my answer would be yes, it is a function. Okay, so now let's go and look at 6 through 10, or 6 through 8, excuse me. It says if a graph is a relation, the vertical line test, it's another way that we are actually able to test a graph on whether it is a function or not. So go ahead and highlight the vertical line test. And the way we will actually do that is we are going to draw a vertical line, that's your up and down line, okay, it goes north and south, and we are going to see whether or not the graph is touched more than once on the x and y axis. So by drawing my line, and I can draw the line anywhere on the graph, my suggestion, follow the graph, the grid that's already drawn for you, and just draw some vertical lines. Here, the graph did not touch more than once, so this is a function. My answer is yes. Now let's look at number seven. If I draw the vertical lines here, I can notice that this graph is touched more than once. So this answer would be no, it is not a function. Now look at number eight. Be very careful when you start drawing these vertical lines. If you notice on the far left of the graph, in quadrant two, there are two dots that are in the same vertical line. Now, even though it only had that happen once, it's still not a function. Okay, now the last two examples, these are gonna be equations. And this is what you're gonna call the plug and chug method. So if I look, I have an f of x, which is the same thing as y, and my equation says 5x minus 1. I'm going to take the value of x that they give me, which is 10, and plug it into the equation. So I'm just going to rewrite it. I have 5 parenthesis 10 minus 1. Okay, so 5 times 10 is 50, and 50 minus 1 is 49. So that's my answer for number 9. Now let's look at number 10, same thing. Now instead of plugging in a positive 10, now it wants me to plug in a negative 3. And my equation is 2 plus x squared. So again, wherever I see the x, I am going to replace it with the value that it tells me to replace it with, which is a negative 3. And that should be a negative, I just don't think my pen picked it up. So here, a negative 3 squared is a positive 9, because remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. So I'd have 2 plus 9, which will give me 11. So those are your two answers for 9 and 10. So make sure you all have copied all of this down. Underline what I asked you to underline. And real quick, let's look at this last page. And we will pick this up tomorrow. Um, if you look, it says state the domain and range of the following relations and determine if the relation is a function. So not only do I want you to give me the answer for domain and range, I also want you to circle yes or no whether it's a function. So tomorrow, we will talk about the difference between what the arrows and what a open and closed circle mean on a graph. So tomorrow, go ahead and have this written that my domain and my range are all real numbers and I'm going to show you that by using the vertical line test here that we learned on the last page 
that this will be a function because my vertical line does not hit the graph more than once. So make sure you've copied number 11 down and we will finish 12 through 16 tomorrow in class. I will see you tomorrow.